before Ray gets a chance to talk to Brian, Robin has already packed her stuff and has had enough. She's not going to be the birth, give birth to any Christ. She wants a regular life. She's considering having an abortion and tells everybody from the group to leave her alone or she'll sue. And she's going back to New York and that they were never legally married and she'll decide if she's going to have an abortion or not. But if they call her, she will. She's only a week or two weeks at this point. Ray goes up to New York and tells Brian about Robin leaving, which is a problem, but more important, he tells him about the great circle of life and the calibration of the procession. And Brian gets really wild about this new idea because now his count will be based on a scientific calibration of the position of the stars and coming cycles so every 26,000 years goes to another zero and it's totally totally a new concept and the new concept might give it what it needs and he has just realized that he has, will pick up the, the votes of many many Buddhists and Hindu and from India and many other religions that also believe in the circle of life. Well, Ray has given Michael the information about the calendar procession and Ray called Michael and told Michael Brian is really excited and the calendar looks like a for sure go at the UN. This makes Michael think that, boy, if Robin could only understand how big this is, that it's a whole new year zero for the world, she might start believing that her child is. And he's going to call her and tell her that she should have the faith that Mary had when she brought the first Christ into the world. So Michael gives Robin a call. Robin hears this good news. I don't think so. She just says, that's it. Don't ever call me again. I'm going to have this baby. And at this point, it's a little late for an abortion. But she says she'll have it adopted and made sure that no one can ever find it if anybody from that group, particularly Michael, ever calls her again. Robin resumes her modeling career in New York. She is now uh, just about three weeks pregnant at the discotheque. The woman introduces herself as Maria. She appears to be uh, an Asian woman. The disco pass is for a club called the Limelight. It's in a church. It's on 6th Avenue. The address is 666 6th Avenue. And they're having a special event on every Tuesday night called Disco Church. The theme of tonight's event is the Unification Church and Reverend Sung Young Moon, King Messiah. When Robin gets to the line, right, the block goes around. The line goes around the block, but her special invitation manages to get her in front of the line as a VIP. This is very special treatment and gets her in free. She has a VIP complimentary admission pass, something which is very valuable. In the church building, she meets the Asian woman, Maria, who says that she's a Filipino woman and that she would like Robin to appear in a recreation of s some Vietnam um, movie. Robin explains that she's pregnant and she doesn't think she'll be able to be doing much modeling within the next couple of months. Maria is shocked when Robin tells her that Robin is thinking about either aborting at this late time, or giving the baby up for adoption. Robin tells Maria the story about Mike and the cult group in Florida, and how 
they think that the child is very is the morning star and how she cannot stand the thought of them coming back into her life or involved in the child's life. Maria Maria and Robin exchange phone numbers and Maria says that if Robin decides to give up the baby that Maria will help her find an adoption and a good home. As was predicted by Ray, the child is born will do December 21st and on December 20th Robin goes to the hospital. Robin goes to a hospital in Greenwich, Connecticut the town where she's grown up. She goes alone and she is very despondent about the situation of giving the baby up or keeping it and running the risk of Michael coming back into her life. Robin meets a nurse, or really a therapist, who discusses the problem with her. The nurse has the idea of getting a sonogram test. And the sonogram test shows that the child is going to be a girl baby. Then she, Robin doesn't have any problem with Michael thinking that the child's going to be the second coming of Christ. Robin agrees to the sonogram test and she has the test hoping that the baby will be a girl and she'll be able to keep it without worrying about the group. The results of the sonogram show that the child will be a girl and this makes Robin very happy. She gets excited and calls Michael. Robin tells Michael where she is and that the baby is due any day. She invites Michael up to visit her. This must be the happiest moment of Michael's life. He, he says that he'll make plans and come to the hospital as soon as possible. Michael is smart enough to be on his best behavior about mentioning anything about what occurred nine months ago during the festival. Michael tells Ray about the phone call and Ray volunteers to drive Michael up to the hospital. Ray is really excited and he believes that this is the start of the group's influence over the child's life. But he also advises Michael to be very careful and not to scare Robin. Ray and Michael start the drive from F Key Biscayne, Florida to Greenwich. It's going to take them about 26 hours. Even behind them is another car from the group treating this as some sort of a pilgrimage to Bethlehem. By the time Michael reaches the hospital, Robin has already had the child. The nurse on duty, before allowing Michael to come in and visit, asks who he is. Michael explains that he's the father. Robin collaborates that, and Michael now signs the birth record. Robin, who shows Michael that the baby's a girl, says that, that maybe perhaps Michael and the group were wrong about their baby being the second Christ. And Michael, who is puzzled, just is very quiet and soon asks to be excused while he's going to go into the parking lot and tell the group which is waiting outside the news. Outside the hospital there's about 13 group members and Ray waiting for Michael to come out to tell them the news about the special Morning Star child's birth. They are treating this as though it is a Christmas day, which it is. It's December 21st, 
the solstice, the darkest day of the year. The next morning, will, the years, the days will start getting longer. And they say this is the time that was designated. Well, the first thing Ray and Michael discuss is the child's being a girl. Michael says that it looks like the group was wrong and that the child is um, not going to be the second Christ. Ray, on the other hand, with the advice of one of the other group members, says that this means even more that Christ is among men again in the flesh because the first time he came, it was a male. It had to come as a female this time in order for God to be non-sexist, meaning God has no sex, so therefore the second coming would have to be a female. Ray and the group start the celebration. Michael at this point really loses control and runs back into the hospital after visiting hours, goes into Robin's room and startles her. Michael starts his, what Robin calls, shenanigans about their child, the girl, who Robin has named Christine, being the second coming of Christ, this time a woman. As he starts to explain the yin-yang balance of male and female presence of God, Robin gets really upset and doesn't want to hear it, sends Michael away and says that if he tries to have any part of her life that she will take the baby and get lost and give the baby away. Ray and the others hear this and they decide the best thing is to let Robin and the child be. Remembering that Jesus when he was born spent seven years with just his mother and, f and father in Egypt and then grew up quite a normal life until he was um, old enough to start a ministry. So they realized that they're going to start creating a religion centered around this birth and then when the child is old enough and they realize that it would be the year zero when the child is old enough for them to contact her, her and she will then start her great ministry. Robin is smart enough to realize that the group will never go away and that they are just outside planning on how to influence her child and her life forever. She makes the decision to call Maria up and have the baby adopted. When Maria finds that is told by Robin that Michael has come to the hospital and what is worse is that Michael has signed the birth record. Maria says that a legal adoption at this point is out of the question. That she's going to have to arrange some special kind of adoption and even have a man pose as Michael to sign an adoption release form in order to have the baby given up. Maria says for Robin and the infant to meet her at the airport in a week's time when Robin's going to be dismissed from the hospital. And Maria will arrange for her and a man to be there. And Robin and the man will have to go out of state to Chicago to have the baby adopted. And the man will sign the release. Robin is excused from the hospital right before, between Christmas and New Year's Day. And she goes directly to a telephone to call Maria and, and make plans. Robin tells Maria that she wants to go through with the plan to meet at the airport and that she is going to give the baby up. Maria makes all the arrangements and the next day schedules the meeting at the airport. At the airport, 
Maria is with the man who wears a hat and dark glasses. Robin becomes hysterical at the thought of prolonging this any longer and asks Maria to take Robin's identification and the infant and go with the man to Chicago in her place. Maria, who is always trying to make life as easy as she can for Robin, accepts and she takes Robin's identification and the infant and her and the man go to the airplane and Robin leaves. Robin does not even turn back. The pain is so great. Robin resumes her modeling career in New York as if nothing ever happened. Two years pass. And it's 1984, with almost no occurrences and no communications between Robin or Michael. Michael receives a large folder coming FedEx, and it's from Brian Love in New York. In the folder, are instructions and a check for five thousand dollars payable to a agent nine special investigator in Philadelphia. There's also an airplane ticket. The instructions tells Michael that he is to hire the special investigator to help him get visitation to the child. Chris who Robin had. Michael has no idea what, what, where Robin is or what the status of the child is. But Ray says if Brian Loves has suggested this that Michael should do it. Michael travels by airplane with the ticket Brian sent him to Philadelphia. Michael's alone and he is very excited that this is the route for him to take and the start of his communication with the special child again. When Michael gets to Philadelphia, he goes to the address of Special Investigator 9. When Michael gets to the office of Agent 9, he has an appointment because Agent 9 was emailed an appointment by Brian Love and who has set this all up. Agent 9 has tried to do some background information on Brian Love. Agent 9 has run into the same problem that the Florida detective did, is that when you research Brian Love, you find that he has a top secret file in Washington, D.C. Agent 9 finds out a little bit more that Brian was stationed in the Philippines and worked as a disc jockey, as an as an enlisted officer even at the special shows the OSS the organization of special shows for the United States government who entertained in Vietnam during the war right after the attempt to open up Brian's file Agent Nine's telephone, his wireless hand phone, indicates he has an incoming call and he looks at the phone number and it is from Washington, D.C. His attempts to open up the military file set off an alarm and now Washington's calling. He answers the phone and it's the colonel again. The colonel asks why 
Agent 9 is trying to open up Ryan's secu top security records and Agent 9 explains that Brian Love is the benefactor in a missing child case and that the research records were just part of a preliminary on the case. The colonel says that if Brian is just a benefactor in the case and not any kind of a s suspect, that he be left out of the case until there is a federal investigation or they call the FBI. Agent 9 and his colleagues seen here on the left, uh, Dr. Max, or just Max, start in asking Michael about the birth of the child and the mother. Michael starts by showing a picture of him and Robin. Michael tells that he and Robin were married, not legally, at a festival in Florida in 1982, March. He says that Robin is a beautiful model and that she models at the Fine Arts School in New York and that's where he met her. He was an artist. Agent 9 asks if there's any reason why Robin would be reluctant in giving Michael visitation rights. Michael set, starts to tell about the festival and how he and the group think that the Christ child is Robin's child. And he tells about the vision. Dr. Max, who has heard this, says, Oh no, here we go again. Another one of these cases. Michael asks Agent 9, what does Max mean another one of these cases? 9 explains about a case that he had where the complainant had a beard and the other lawyers called the Christ because the case lasted so long and that the plaintiff wanted to take it all the way to the Supreme Court and have a law enacted stopping stockbrokers from double dealing and every time they did a name and number mix up on accounts that it had to be recorded in a security exchange book. The case lasted so long and the stock transaction consisted of 900 oil well stocks. That's how he got his nickname. And the other lawyers said the case was Christ versus Nine. Michael says that, well, that plaintiff couldn't have been the Christ because my child is. She was born during the great sign in heaven. And he starts going into his routine. Agent Nine interrupts and says, do you have any proof that the child is yours and Michael takes out the birth record. The records do show that it was a girl they named Christine and that Michael has signed and is acknowledged as the father. Agent 9 goes over to Max who has been researching the planetary alignment on his computer and asks Max to take the birth record and call the Greenwich, Connecticut District Attorney Linda Von Bell, who he mentions is an old schoolmate of his, and have Linda get ready to start a child visitation case there at the county court. Max gets the phone and calls Linda. Linda was ready at the office and gets on the phone and hears about the case. Uh, Max has already faxed her over a copy of the birth record and Linda says that she will call the hospital and try to get a location on Robin and the child and 
get them subpoenaed as soon as possible and start a legal action. And she suggests that Michael come down to the courthouse tomorrow morning to sign the visitation request forms to start the case rolling. Uh, Agent 9 does tell Linda that Robin did work at the Fine Arts School in Manhattan and that she might be in Manhattan. He also says that there might be some kind of a complication in this case due to the sanity of Michael, the father. Agent 9, Michael, and Max make arrangements to meet tomorrow at Agent 9's early to drive up to Greenwich, Connecticut. The next morning, they get in the car and make the trip to Greenwich, Connecticut. About a five hour, four hour drive from Philadelphia. The trip is reminds Michael of their, him and Robin's trip to Florida and he reminisces about it while eight, to Agent 9 as they drive over the George Washington Bridge this time up to Greenwich, Connecticut. When they get to Greenwich, Connecticut they go to the office of District Attorney Linda Von Bell It's already pretty late because they did have a long drive and to their amazement there's Robin in Linda's office. Linda says she did contact Robin through the Fine Arts School where Robin's phone number and address was listed and as she asked Robin to come down and Robin has come down and told Linda that the child has been given away to an anonymous, anonymous woman named Maria and that Robin has no idea where the child is herself, that Linda suggests that the FBI get called in on this case, considering that the last the child was seen was at the airport on its way to Chicago. Robin is starting to get somewhat worried about serious charges being filed against her. Agent 9 tells Linda that before she calls the FBI, he must call the Pentagon and talk to a Colonel Pagano. This really confuses Linda. Uh, when has the Pentagon ever been involved with a missing child case? And Agent 9 says it has to do with Brian Corley, who is possibly a suspect in the show. Agent 9 has been told the whole story while they, him and Michael drove up and thinks that the vision and the whole aspect of the child being the Christ is a production by the disc jockey Brian Corley. Robin is very worried about being charged with a child, selling a child at this point. Agent 9 calls Colonel Pagano and Colonel Pagano says that he will assign an FBI agent to the case, one who is somewhat familiar. Colonel Pagano says that Brian Love is a particular case because he is starting a calendar resolution to go over to the year zero that the Pentagon really wants passed. The fact is that Brian is starting legislation in the Supreme Court to have the AD calendar disallowed by the separation of church and state clause amendment of the Constitution giving way to the positive acceptance of a New Year Zero and saving his computers from the overload situation they will experience when they reach zero zero because they will have a conflict of information to, 
The truth is that, that the computers at the Pentagon have been treating the year z 1900 as the year zero. They have never been using the birth of Christ as a year zero. They only have a 100 year active digit field. Linda consoles Robin to some extent and says that she can, Robin can be sure that the baby is in good hands with Maria the Filipino woman and that Maria, Maria is probably a nurse or a doctor who, and that there's many Filipino people who, who are domestic and raise the children up there in Greenwich. Greenwich is um, one of the wealthiest, if not the wealthiest town in the United States or city in the United States and she can, Robin can rest assured that the child is definitely being taken care of. Um, then Michael starts asking Robin why, why she did it and uh, Robin says she wanted to keep the child and she blames it on Michael and the group and Linda asks about the group and Robin and Michael start telling Linda about the festival when the phone rings. Linda answers the phone and it, it's uh, the FBI agent who introduces himself. The agent's name is Bob Parker and he says that he has already done some research into the Chicago trip and he finds that no one meeting the description has ever gotten on the plane that the seats were reserved and then the tickets were cashed in so nobody ever did go to Chicago he tries to research some adoption agencies in New York and he finds no legal adoptions he says that he's sure that the child is still with Maria or just being passed around as an illegal he says it's definitely a case for him. He's going to get in touch with the colonel. Oh. Linda asks if there's any suspects and does mention Brian Corley as a, the Brian Love and as a suspect and asks uh, if, a, if the FBI has done any re has opened the secret file or knows about Brian being involved. Bob says that the secret file is even closed to the FBI. It's strictly a Pentagon top security file. But he knows about Brian Corley from an investigation that he was put on two years ago about a death that occurred in a festival in Florida during called the Doomsday Festival where a man was killed. Brian was somewhat of a accomplice or a suspect to the man's death, but he was, Brian was exonerated. Uh, Bob Parker says he went down to Florida and did some research on this and has an extensive volume of information about some sort of an Atlantis Babalu cult that the man was in which uh, is really interesting because uh, there's no question that Brian is the head of that organization called the Babalu and that he actually has a whole book of um, Babalu traditional information Linda gets off the phone by saying that she would be very interested in to see that information but it doesn't really have anything to do with the case at hand and then the FBI says that he's going to talk to Colonel Pagano and he'll get back the Colonel will call them back and decide what information will be available to them. After getting off the phone, Linda turns her attention to Robin and Michael and trying to get as much information as she can about the festival and uh, Brian Love.
Michael says that he has a picture of Brian Love from one of the newspaper articles about the concert in the festival. And he shows it to Agent 9. Agent 9 looks at the photograph of Brian Love and notices standing right behind Brian Love is this Christ-looking figure. And Brian... And... Um, Agent 9 has Michael, who is this? And Michael says that this is the piper, Babalu Phil. He was the one that was playing the flute at the moment he, Michael saw the vision. He was playing the Star Spangled Banner, closing the show, and it was the part gave truth to the night when the vision occurred. Linda looks at the picture and she says it is a remarkable resemblance and the first name is the same. She says she has a scrapbook from Agent Nine's famous case which got him his name with a picture of Phil. Dr. Max picks up the telephone and calls a record store and sees if they have any records by Babalu Phil. And he locates one and says he's going to run out and get a copy to see if it has more information. Linda shows the picture to Robin and Mike that she has on file of Phil a newspaper article from a magazine called The Whistleblowers, which is a magazine dedicated to consumer advocates. Linda says, do you remember this picture? It's a picture of Agent 9 and Phil standing in front of the federal courthouse there in Washington. This was the picture that finally got you your name, Agent 9. They're the ones who started it. And Agent 9 is confronting Phil, and Michael says, yes, this is the Babalu Phil from the concert. Agent 9 starts to get a little disturbed and says, if Phil is involved with this case, I think it will become the year zero. Michael and Robin look at the picture and confirm that this is a the same man. Michael s mentions that now he understands why Brian Love sent the check in the folder for Michael to go to Agent 9. That Brian Love has been and Phil have been orchestrating this and that they know just about every move that everyone's doing. It's all centered around the child being the Christ. Agent 9 gets a telephone call from the colonel. Just at the same time, Max comes in the door with a copy of a, a record album. The record album confirms it. Bob Lou Phil and the Phil who ran the court case are the same person. It has a portfolio of Phil on the back and tells about his life story on the back of the album. Agent 9 tells the Colonel the newest part of the story that now Phil is involved with the story. The Colonel the colonel tells everyone involved to come to Washington for a special briefing at the Pentagon and that they're not to, real, to contact Phil or Brian, that the, the arrangements will be made for tomorrow morning for them to meet at the Pentagon so they can catch the, tr the Amtrak train from uh, Greenwich to Washington. After hanging up the phone, 
Agent 9 says to the group, Well, he, the colonel didn't say anything about going to disco parties, and New York is on the way to Washington, D.C., so why don't we just uh, take the car and spend the night in New York and go to one of these disco parties. He tells Max to find out something about the limelight and they make arrangements to stay at the Waldorf and go to the limelight disco that night to look for Maria. Nine tells Max that they're going to drop Max off at the airport and Max will go to Florida to do research on the death of the man at the festival. Max says that he doesn't trust Washington to give the true story that he suspects Washington will do a cover-up to protect Brian. Max agrees and he goes to Florida to do an extensive research on the reason the man died at the festival and if there was any implication that Brian was involved. Agent 9, Linda, Michael, and Robin travel to New York City. Linda has put a schedule together. First they're going to go to Tavern on the Green, stay, and then they're going to go later to the limelight to see if they can find Maria.